the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So as I was talking to one of our youth about high school, I could feel my gut racing 30 years into the past, and I felt the exact weight and breathlessness, and I even, I could tell that my chest was rising and falling um, in a way that I had transcended all the way back. My mind was still here in, in 2019. My mind realized uh, that the moments that caused me such anxiety in high school really weren't as big as I thought they were. But that visceral feeling, that feeling of feeling like something is pressing on your chest, uh, that you're just overwhelmed, wouldn't go away. I have to tell you, in high school, I was a professional procrastinator, one of the greatest. <laughs> Unless you judge greatness by getting everything in in time and just waiting till the last minute. But I was great at uh, pressing print as the first bell rang uh, and, and throwing the staple on as uh, the second bell rang and uh, the teacher getting ready to say, any more papers will, be, will no longer be accepted. It would fall into the tray uh, and I would get full credit. Um, and for some reason, uh, I never learned or adjusted. And that worked really, really well most of the time. But then, you know, there'd be just those moments where a couple things would collide. Maybe it was something that I absolutely had to see on television that I hadn't put into account. Uh, or maybe I'd gotten sick uh, and lost a couple days. Or some other teacher assigned something that I hadn't accounted for. Or I got two thirds the way through and realized I needed a library book. And the library had been closed for a long time. And this was before you could go on the internet and just pull the information. Um, but there were those moments. And then I would take a deep breath and I would think I can just ask the teacher for mercy and I realized that usually I'd already done that and exhausted that, um, that avenue. Um, and then I would have two or three things do and the feeling I remember uh, would become overwhelming. Uh, and I would start to put all these scenarios in my head. I won't get into college, I'll fail out of high school, all of these things will, uh, will forever change my life and my breathing would change and it would just almost immobilize me. At that point, I really couldn't do much productive. Uh, but somehow I did get through high school and got into college and uh, learned my lesson and have never procrastinated since. <laughs> okay, so in college it was even worse because now it wasn't just my academic piece. I had been given financial freedom, a credit card. Um, you know, I, um, I had freedoms that I hadn't had before. I could miss weeks and weeks and weeks of classes without any consequence until midterms and finals or that paper that counted 70% of the grade. Uh, and you could get into much deeper trouble. And I remember the combination of, of heartbreak um, uh, from a relationship that I thought I would never find again, uh, compounded with um, uh, some uh, bad habits developed in college with uh, missed deadlines. And I remember thinking, there is no way I can get up from this. And I remember feeling like I was on my back with things just pressing against me and the light uh, seemingly growing dim. I have been through much more important things, much more serious things later in life. But luckily, I've never felt as hopeless as I did in those moments. And some of it's the body chemistry of a, uh, of a teenage or early 20s uh, uh, male. Um, some of it was that I didn't have uh, the things that I trust and hold on to uh, deeply. And some of, it, um, some of it was I didn't have the faith and the experience of knowing that God never ends the story there. And I think about all the things that happen in life, all the things um, that happen of such a great magnitude of losing the love of your life, whether to death or to divorce and having to start over and not really having the energy of losing a beloved uh, family member, of financial uh, crash, of, of buying a house when you, th you're, you think everything's going great and then the economy turns, um, or you lose that job that you uh, absolutely loved and you just don't know what's going to happen next and you have all these people depending on you, 
all of these situations that leave you on your back with stone upon stone just pounding on your chest and it gets dim. For everyone that's ever been there. And it might just be that you can't find your joy. It might not be anything you can put your finger on. It might be that you turned on the news too many times and didn't see enough stories about good things happening, people treating each other well, uh, and hopelessness just seems to be winning out. Whatever makes you feel that way, where you can feel your breath tightening, this gospel lesson is for you. This gospel lesson is God's assurance of two things. God is always with you. In the deepest pit, God is with you. And two, the story will never end there. God will never let your story end there. So this gospel lesson, uh, this is going to date me as well. Um, do you remember those overhead projectors? Yeah. And you have those uh, transparencies, and you... Uh, this was high technology back in the day. You put multiple transparencies on top of each other, uh, you know, and you'd see them, especially in geometry, you'd see the different, you know, uh, angles. But, uh, but there are three different transparencies in this gospel. There's three different stories being told. The first is the story itself. Jesus talking to his followers. The second is Luke talking to Jesus' followers a century later. And the third is you sitting in the pew right now. And all those three are layered together. So first, Jesus' story. So Jesus is in Jerusalem. We've had that triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and Jesus knows this is the last week he will have with those people that have become so dependent on him, that have believed so fully in what he has to say, that have seen God in a way they never thought possible, uh, but are still pretty fragile. And Jesus is in Jerusalem, and he sees the temple. He sees this place that has been such a, a conflicted place uh, in him. It has been the place that he loves, the place that as a child he went to and got lost uh, of being in communing with God. Uh, it's also been a place uh, that he's seen hold people at an arm's length from God whether they didn't have enough money to exchange for an offering, uh, whether it's because of their disease that had them uh, 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 outside the temple. And he's looking at the temple, and he's thinking and saying, there will never be those kind of walls between you and God ever again. Really, there never was. But there will never be those kind of walls separating you from God from God, and whether it's your illness, whether it's your shame, whether it's the thing that weighs down on you and takes away your hope, you don't have to leave that aside, get dressed up to the nines, and go uh, into the church and pretend none of that exists to be with God. God is there. And he says that this will be destroyed stone from stone, because my story is that I came to be with you in the pit. I came to be with you in the grief. I came to be with you in the suffering. And I came to be with you in the joy. Not so you could take all that off and dress up and come see me. But so that there is no place in your life apart from me. And when my love is spilled out on the cross, there is nothing that will ever separate us. And two, that you will go through chaos. You'll go through suffering. You'll see me in the next couple days go through the most painful thing uh, that you can imagine. But that will not be the end of the story. God is at the helm, and God won't let my story, and God won't let your story end there. And that's his message to his followers. They will be persecuted. They will be suffering. It won't be easy, but I will be with you, and that will never be how the story ends. And to Luke, whose people have already seen the destruction of the temple, who are being persecuted, who are the thread that are the reason that we got from Jesus to you all here today, who, powered by the gift of the Holy Spirit, need to know that all of the chaos of their lives will never be the end of the story. That in their faithfulness, in their acknowledgement that God resides inside their heart, that God is in their suffering, that they will not end in despair, and that God will be with them and guide them 
and lead them past. And now to us today. We get dressed up and we come here and sometimes we, uh, we like to leave our baggage behind. But Jesus wants us desperately to know that we come here to remind ourselves of those two other truths. God doesn't reside here any more than he does uh, in the place of your deepest shame or your deepest hurt or your deepest anxiety. God is with you. The God that made you in the image of God, that looked upon all creation and said it is good, is the God that came and walked with you, lived the human life fully, poured out, poured out that life for you. That God will never, never, ever lead you, no matter how chaotic life might be, no matter how hopeless it may seem in your own life or outside uh, in the world at large, and God will never let the story end in despair. God will never let the story end in the deepest trench. It may take to the life hereafter, but the God who made you, the God who walked with you, the God who redeemed you, will be the God in whom you finish your story in eternity, in his love. Amen.